Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, on this episode, we have a very special guest. His name is Michael Binsky, and uh, he recently, he's a local Phoenix photographer here that I met previously, but he just shot a video uh, about 10 days ago of a gigantic storm that hit Phoenix, Arizona, and that video went viral. It's been on NBC Nightly News and CNN and the Weather Channel. It's been all over the place, and just recently, we found out it was actually licensed by Al Gore himself, and so this has gathered all kinds of attention so we thought hey Mike is just around the corner let's have him come in and talk about this amazing video as well as a lot of the other kind of uh, photography that he does so without further ado here's our conversation with Mike all right Mike well thanks so much for joining us today um, so let's walk through that crazy week of July 5th yep. we had a crazy storm and it's called a haboob is that right, right? yeah all right so tell us what happened um, I was in the backyard filming another time lapse because I had been out storm chasing like five days in a row and I was going to take a night off. So I just set up the tripod out back and thought, you know, there's some storms out there. I'll put it on, uh, I'll let it go and I'll just go inside and watch TV with the wife. But um, as I was doing that, I got a text from some friends of the uh, dust storm rolling over the mountains in the East Valley. And I'm like, well, this is, this will give me a chance to go downtown to the to the parking garage I've been wanting to go mm -hmm. shoot from and see if I can get you know a dust storm rolling over town and it's only a block from my house so I'm like I'll just run down there and do it but uh, but when I got there I just I didn't I just thought it'd be a dust storm and I was watching right. as I set up and, st and kind of stood back I was like wow this is and that, so how big was this storm so people understand what this was it's I've heard from 75 to 100 miles wide so you know the entire length of Phoenix if not more than that and then 5,000 feet tall when it hit Phoenix. So this is about 100 miles before. wide by 5,000 feet tall, yeah. gigantic storm. Yeah, and in the video, you can actually see the very top of the cloud, of the dust cloud, actually forming clouds against mm -hmm. the lower clouds because of the air rising so fast. I mean, that's how high it was. Usually, it's not that high. Yeah. So you see this gigantic 100 mile wide storm coming yep. at you, and you decided to throw a camera on a parking yep. garage? Yeah, I was, you know, I was already doing a time lapse, so I ran downtown and I knew I wanted to get something. I'd been wanting to get lightning over downtown or do something because I, kind of, I storm chase a lot. And so um, getting the dust coming over the, the buildings would be great, dwarfing them, making them look really small and, you know, getting the idea of how big these dust storms can be. Because usually they're, you know, a couple thousand feet tall, not mm -hmm. 5,000. So I just went out there, threw it on and, you know, set it to five seconds, you know, apart and then let it go. Wow. And so, uh, I mean, did your camera have lots of dust and nastiness or I mean what how did you how did you do that when this storm actually well hit? Um, I got a lot of crap for it on you know some comments where the video has been posted and stuff there's a lot of comments like from now on the rule of time lapses time lapsing dust storms is you have to hang in there until the dust actually hits you and you know I got a 5d mark II and it cost me a lot of money and I you know that was a big purchase for me and I use it a lot for other things so I wasn't gonna risk ruining it I didn't you know I didn't know I've heard dust is bad so I didn't want to risk it so <laughs> I've heard the um, same thing <laughs> I, and, this, and this was this was you know the ultra, ultimate dust cloud so and this is like hung in dust there, this is like a sandblaster yeah. yeah and so if I would have kept the shutter doing this while the dust was hitting I don't know you know who knows so off camera on the left of the frame the dust was actually closer because of the angle it was coming at so it looks like it's across the freeway but it's really just a couple hundred feet to the right. left of me. So I grabbed the camera, threw it in the car, and jumped in the front seat, closed the door, and it hit. And it was total blackout. Yeah, it was absolutely just like fog. It's craziness. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about how you actually set your camera. So you only have limited time, you gotta set everything up, and you know you have one shot at getting this right. Right. What'd you do? I've been starting to learn how to do time lapses just this summer. So I haven't done too many of them. I just started because I do all the storm chasing, I capture all these images, but I'd like to go out there and sit and watch the monsoons build and see rain and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm trying to get into it. So, you know, for me, I just ran out there, threw it on five seconds, put it in P mode so that I wouldn't have to worry about trying to fidget with the exposure and all this stuff while it was coming. I didn't know if it was gonna get darker and all these different things. So I just put it on P and let it go and kind of stood back and I wish I had another camera or two that I could have shot, or I, I really wish I would have had a 
wider lens than a 17 millimeter. A lot of the comments that I've seen on the, the Vimeo video mm -hmm. and uh, in other places, Facebook and things like that, was uh, the discussion of your choice to put it on program mode. Yeah. You know, why not put it on any other mode than right. that? And uh, I think it, that was one of the best decisions that you made because mm -hmm. You have this massive storm coming at you. You know you have to tell some story, right. and you got it. Right. And um, so after you got that, some things happened. So yeah. <laughs> tell us how you go from on a rooftop of a garage to now your video is all over national television. You know, I came home and I actually wasn't, I knew it was going to probably be something good. Uh, you know, I love the Weather Channel, I love weather in general. I've always wanted to get on the Weather Channel. And as I was recording it, I thought, this might get me there because mm -hmm. this is, for me, I could watch this over and over. So once mine got posted, um, Gizmodo picked it up and a couple other places picked it up. I had, a, I had a friend in National Weather Service in Phoenix tell me to try to get it out there, try mm -hmm. to, you know, like this is a really good video. You should be trying to at least try to sell it to networks and make some money off it. Mm -hmm. So I submitted it to CNN and MSNBC and the Weather Channel via their methods of doing that. And so I was up to like three in the morning just trying to get it out. My website was already almost crashing from traffic because I posted a blog about it and I called it Phoenix Haboob July 5th, 2011. That's all anyone was searching for. So yeah, and so I checked this morning. So you posted this video 10 days ago mm -hmm. and you've had 1.1 million views yeah. just on Vimeo. Just on Vimeo. That's, uh, what's that, 100,000 views a day? Yeah, it was, it was insane. I mean, I think it went up to 600,000 within, you know, four days. Mm -hmm. On Monday or Tuesday this week, it somehow got posted somewhere in Japan on some Yahoo sharing site, and it got 300,000 views within one day amazing. out there. Let's talk about something else, sir. Okay. So you have this one amazing video. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a blessing, but it could be a curse because people could start seeing you as the guy who shot the haboob and forget about everything else that you've been shooting for years. Yeah. So has it, do you think, helped you or um, has, it, has it brought eyes to some of the other work that you've done? I think, it's brought, I think it's brought some eyes onto everything else I do. I know, you know, I do wedding photography, I do portrait photography, family stuff. I, I shoot events when, you know, when needed. and. Um, so because of this, I've had you know I've already had some wedding inquiries and things like that. Um, so, so that's if been, you have a stormy wedding, <laughs> yeah, if you stormy wedding, I would love to do that. Um, but you know, other people, you know, they saw the dust storm, and I've gotten a, just a lot of notes from people saying I saw the dust storm pictures, but I then I went and looked at your whole gallery, and I love everything you do. And yeah, I don't necessarily want to be known just for this, and I'm hoping that it just brings exposure to everything I do because I know a lot of people in Phoenix have seen it, um, search for it, right. and then find my website and see everything else I do. So, you know, I'm hoping that definitely helps the well, rest I have of the business. some pictures here that are on my trusty iPad. Um, so let's talk about some of the other stuff that okay. you do. Let's first start, uh, talk about some of the scenic stuff. So we have this, it looks like the Superstition Mountains, big stormy mm -hmm. clouds. Walk us through how you shot this, this image. Um, this, was, this was a really cool image for me. It's one that I shot like over a year and a half ago, and it's one I always go back to as one of my more popular ones if anyone ever sees it. Um, I was driving up that road in the other direction coming from the mountains and I didn't even know, I'd never been out there before. So I stopped to shoot storms that were in the opposite direction. When I got out and turned around, I saw this road in these clouds and I'm like, I almost missed this if I hadn't mm -hmm. stopped. And I always say that to a lot of people that sometimes the, the photograph that's the best is the one you weren't even intending on getting. And I just turned around and saw this. So I just set up in the middle of the road. It's, it looks like it'd be a cool road to drive down, but it's really right. pretty empty. So I just set up in the middle road and fired off some brackets and, and I was really heavy into HDR then. I don't use it as much now, I st but I still do. But that was, you know, just a three bracket HDR and um, Very nice. just the clouds were engulfing the mountains. It was pretty amazing. All right, here's one of my favorites. This is a bride on a beach, it looks like. Yeah, it was. there's a beach down there. This was just some lush, weird California vegetation. I don't even know what that stuff was. We were- Iceberg lettuce, something in Yeah, it looks like, it looks <laughs> like that. And uh, we were, in the, there was a hotel nearby and we, and I had looked out and I'm like, that looks amazing out there. Let's just go walk around in it. And I was shooting it with my um, uh, buddy, Rick Young. And so mm -hmm. we just took him out there and walked him around. And um, so how did you light this? Is it all natural light? It looks like there's, it's all natural. It's all natural light. Just, you know, edited in Lightroom, you know, got the colors up a little bit, but I mean, other than that, it was just all natural. I love natural light. You know, it's, it's, it's easy, simple. You know, I don't feel like I miss things when I'm trying to think about 
technical mm -hmm. details? So uh, you guys actually went exploring, let's say that. Yep. Exploring at a uh, place and you got this amazing shot. Yep. Uh, tell us about this. Is this another HDR image? Yes, that's an HDR image. I don't know how I would have been able to really do it without it because I tried to get the seats that are inside this. So we were out there and then these clouds just showed up and it was one of the best you know, Arizona yeah. sunsets we've ever seen. And so we were just in there snapping away. It was great. All right, getting all kinds of interesting things. Um, all right, well, let's talk about some of the other images that you do. I mean, there's tons of HDR images that we really love. Uh, this is another great portrait shot. Is this the same uh, California wedding? A no, this wedding? was in um, west of uh, Phoenix in, I think, Glendale, um, out at the um, Wildlife World Zoo. All right. They love the zoo a lot. And so after their wedding, we, we just walked around the zoo and took pictures. And this was one of those little gondola rides. Mm -hmm. and I sat behind him with a 70 to 200 2.8 which my other good friend Ken right. Peterson let me borrow and um, I'm in love with that lens now but this was and this is this natural light as well yeah. yep. so uh, is everything you do natural light for the most part I mean obviously this image right here was two flashes set up that I've seen mm -hmm. a technique done out there and I really like now, how did you trigger these flashes? So this is at night. Yeah. It's at a reception. The, I have a dance. couple. I have a couple of simple Alien B transmitter receivers. Mm -hmm. They're not the Pocket Wizards or whatever yet. And I'll, I'll probably end up getting those someday. But this was just a simple. Um, on top of my camera, I had a. Uh, well, actually, no. I think I actually I triggered it with a speed light on my camera because I had you know the Gary right. Fong on there and then triggered. The other one across So Gary the Fong on the camera with yep. the speed light, and then there's an Alien B on the other side? No, this is actually another speed light over another there with no light. diffuse or anything, just you gotcha. know, one eighth power or something. I can't remember what the setting was, but it just it, it creates an awesome uh, backlight and these awesome shadows, and then you get a little bit of um, diffuse light on, mm -hmm. uh, in the front. And when you shoot uh, weddings outside at night, that's one of our, our biggest questions is how do I shoot a wedding outside at night in the dark? And it's really difficult to tell people how to do that. It's really, and I, you know, I haven't done too many. This was the first one, um, really, that I, that I kind of understood what I was doing a little bit. Um, I think using that, you know, Gary Fong on-camera diffuser is really the best way once you kind of learn mm -hmm. how, to, how to angle it and stuff to get the light right. But on a dance floor and other things, something like this to really create light everywhere, and then you're able to create a little front right. light. I guess. And do you have problems with batteries? Do you have an assistant or something that's helping replace no, those? No, um, I carry a bunch of batteries with me and mm -hmm. I'm going to get one of those power, you know, huge mm -hmm. battery packs that plug in at some point. But right now I just carry a bunch of lithium ion batteries with Perfect. me. Perfect. Well, here's, uh, I think we'll finish on this shot. One of my favorites and uh, it Thanks. says 24 and it's, tell us how this, this image was made. Um, I actually call this Remains of the Day, which is, it was a movie thing I do on my blog and it was just perfect for um, this. But um, I was just walking around downtown Phoenix because um, I moved downtown, so I had to get storm images down there, whatever I can. And so I was just looking for re reflection shots this night. Mm -hmm. And I just walked around a parking lot, and these, you know, it was right before sunset. The sky was really eerie looking, and I was just looking for interesting things on the ground. And there was, you know, the lines from parking from so the parking lot. So is this lot. water on the parking lot? Yeah, that's totally that's total water. It's a big puddle, and this was an asphalt parking lot. This was spot number 24, mm -hmm. and you can see the line off the off the right. top and then just the buildings of Phoenix behind it. And this was an HDR uh, six bracket image, put it together and I tone map it, you know, photomatics, but I use um, on one software, photo tools and all that stuff a lot. And I love that package and they have so many cool uh, features. And so stuff. tell us specifically, so uh, it's on one software yeah. and photomatics? Uh, well, yeah, I use photomatics to do um, the tone mapping, but I don't really do a whole lot. I've, try I've taught a, a class once in HDR where I just try to get a nice flat image where I get the whole range of light. You don't do any mm -hmm. stylizing in photomatics. I think that's a big mistake that a lot of people make. And you take that into Photoshop or whatever, and I use um, On One Photo Tools to you know, finalize my images. So you bring that into there, and then you can really just add yeah. all kinds of cool stuff. We just did a, an episode on HDR imaging, and one of the things that a lot of people commented about that, and I totally agree, we, I sort of uh, battled mm -hmm. if I was going to do one or not, because generally I don't like HDR images mm -hmm. because I find people overdo them. Yes. So you get these halos and just colors that look like a carnival. Yep. Um, and so you've, you've not done that with your HDR right, images. Right, right. So. Lately, I mean, it was, <clears throat> it was kind of an awakening last fall, winter, where I realized how little I wanted to do everything in photomatics because mm -hmm. you create so much contrast and stuff in photomatics and it ruins, it creates so much noise if you do it in there. So I just get rid of all the noise in photomatics and then add that in Photoshop. And then you keep the textures of like clouds 
mm -hmm. without having to use a whole lot of noise reduction that kills what they look like. Right. And that's, that's kind of important for anything, not just clouds and HDR. Yeah, to get it right. Well, we're out of time, but tell well, people where they can find your work and where your blog is, all that stuff. Um, my blog is MikeOlbinski.com. Uh, Twitter is Mike Olbinski. I pretty much use my name for everything. <laughs> so on Facebook, Mike Olbinski Photography. Um, and I'm Google Plus now too. I don't know exactly how you find it, but I think if you search for my name, you'll find you'll it. You'll find easily. it in there. Yeah, I Googled your name and boom, first right. thing. Yeah. The haboob. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much for thank hanging you. out with us. Thank you. appreciate it. And uh, we'll post all those links as well to the Adorama Learning Center and uh, right below us. But then again, thank cool. you so much thank for you. having us. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mike. Well, we had a ton of fun chatting with Mike, and uh, there's a lot of information out on his blog and website. And you can even look at that video for yourself, see the entire thing. You can buy prints and they have some black, white, and color stuff, so don't miss it. Uh, his website again is mikeolbinski.com, and you can see all of the links to his Twitter account and all the information that we talked about at the Adorama Learning Center, so absolutely don't miss that. Well, thanks so much for joining me this week. Remember, just zip over to the Adorama Learning Center to see more interviews with other photographers, as well as information about bracketing and shooting HDR images and all kinds of tutorials for photography. And if you have a tip for somebody that you'd like to see on how they do that, send your suggestion to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you again next episode. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store, located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Cool. Awesome. Take a guess at how long we talked. Oh, you looked. Oh, I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> I was going to say 10 minutes, so that was, that was wrong.